At the end of October 1918, the National Council for Styria achieved that the state governorship in Graz named Slovenians for leaders of county districts in Slovenian Styria. The Slovenians took over the districts on 1st of November 1918. On the same day, Major Rudolf Meister met Maribor City Command and surprised the officers with his firm attitude, the post city commander, and took over the military power in Maribor and Slovenian Styria. The National Council awarded Major Meister with the rank of general and increased his authority. On 1st of November 1918, Maribor joined the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs. General Meister dismissed the foreign army and kept the Slovenian soldiers in the town. In the first days of November, Major Franz Svirn took over the city command. With the takeover of military authority and county districts, only the primary foundations for Slovenian Maribor were set. Municipality, court, post office, railway, banks, schools, etc. remained in German hands. On 30th of October 1918, the City Council of Maribor Municipality, in which there wasn't even one Slovenian citizen, adopted a decision with which Maribor and its wider hinterland became a part of the new country, German Austria. During this time, the Maribor Germans were afraid of the soldiers that were returning home from the front. To avoid national tensions, they were prepared to indulge the Slovenians. For negotiations with them, they established the Town Executive Committee. The Germans did nothing without a consensus. They even gave up the 47th Infantry Regiment that fulfilled Meister's order on 3rd of November and left for German Austria. On the same day, with the consensus of National Council and General Meister, they established the Security Guard, Schutzwehr or Green Guard. From the military point of view, it was subordinate to General Meister and maintained by the municipality. Due to the lack of Slovenian soldiers, the status of Slovenians in Maribor drastically worsened and the status of Germans improved. On 12th of November 1918, the German city council celebrated the establishment of German Austria. It readopted the decision that Maribor is a part of German Austria. With constant new reinforcement, the Green Guards started to become a threat to the Slovenian army in Maribor. There were tensions between them and even shootings took place. To improve the status of Slovenians in Maribor, one had to fortify the Slovenian army. Approximately 400 soldiers arrived from Celje to Maribor. Some of the soldiers that returned from the front stayed here. General Meister unsuccessfully asked the Second War District in Ljubljana for military help. Since he didn't get any army there, he decided for mobilization. So many soldiers gathered that on 21st of November 1918, the Maribor Infantry Regiment was established. In the middle of November, the military transport stopped and the Slovenian army became strong enough, which enabled General Meister to disarm the Green Guard in a well-prepared action on 23rd of November 1918. With this action, the Slovenians were again superior in Maribor and used this state as well. They took over the court, the post office, the railway, some of the schools, gendarmerie, and on 2nd of January 1919, the town administration. Taking over the German offices led to a grand strike at the court, post offices, the railway, at the railway workshop and at the boiler room that lasted from 29th of November until 14th of December 1918. The strike was unsuccessful, but it did accelerate the introduction of the Slovenian language as the official language. After disarming the Green Guard, the Slovenian army started to occupy the territory along the northern national border. The Pohori battalion consisted of soldiers from different troops and detachments. In November 1941, the battalion was reorganized into three troops and a female platoon. Rudolf Medegroga was the commandant of the battalion. Joze Menich Rajko was the political commissioner. Joze Urisek Trpin was the Communist Party secretary and commissary. Paula Mede Katarina was the female platoon commandant. 
The battalion also had its own doctor, Dr. Dushan Mrowliak, Mrosh. Having arrived in the Pohorya Hills, the battalion units were soon fully involved in marches and campaigns. On 8th of October 1942, at night, they burned Senor's Alpine Cottage, Hutter's Villa, Pungart Cottage, Pesek Cottage and Vitania Cottages, so that the Germans would not occupy and take them for their billets. On 23rd of October at night, they visited Oplotnica. They attacked the armed police force and recruit station, burned the municipality quarters and held a partisan rally in the village later on. That same night they blasted and burned the building in the Czeslak quarry and seized large quantities of ammunition. In the beginning of November they burned Pergar cardboard factory in Mislinia and seized plenty of arms and food in the recruit station. They burned Lenarčić's villa in Josipdol in December and went out for their supplies a couple of times. At the end of December, the battalion settled in a winter camp at Asankarica, at a spot referred to as Trijezebli, and its patrols fetched food from different places below the Pohorje hills. The Germans were gathering detailed information about the Pohorje battalion and chasing them a number of times. On 8th of January 1943, the German occupying forces surrounded the battalion camp at Osankarica. They fought for two hours and a half. 69 soldiers of the Pohorje battalion were killed in action. Only one wounded partisan, Franz Gunaver Sulec, was taken hostage and later shot. The Germans took the bodies of 65 soldiers to Graz and buried them in the cemetery there. Later, four more bodies were found at the battlefield and buried at the Oplotnica cemetery. Their remains were transferred to the memorial in Rusche after the war. Due to treason, the Germans also succeeded in annihilating the patrol of the Pohorje battalion on 17th of January 1943 in Šentvit nad Valdekom. Having suffered 19 killed and 31 wounded soldiers in the Sankarica battle, the Germans reported about the annihilation of the battalion to the Reichsführer SS and Chief of German Police Heinrich Himmler in Berlin, and he further reported this news to the Chancellor of the German Reich, Adolf Hitler. According to this report, the battalion conducted 105 attacks and six major military operations and burned nine facilities. The defeat of the Pohrie battalion was a big blow to the resistance movement in Steierska region. Twenty sixth of June, nineteen ninety one. Festivities on the independence of Slovenia, which was until then a part of Yugoslavia, took place throughout Slovenia. In spite of rain, people gathered at Freedom Square in Maribor to celebrate independence of the just-born state. 27th of June, 1991. Just a day later, around 8 a.m., military tanks from the barracks in Maribor left. On the streets, barricades were erected. The barricades were made using buses and heavy trucks at all major crossroads, as well as on roads leading from the left to the right bank of the Drava River. Tanks and other military vehicles could break through barricades with difficulty and great efforts. Behind them, they left ruins and destroyed buses and trucks. Some military vehicles were stopped by other barricades, some advanced to the border crossings near Maribor. The war for independence of Slovenia has started. People of Maribor once again had to fight another war, the third one in the 20th century. Shots, bombings, threats, a lot of frightened young Yugoslav soldiers that had no idea what is going on, Slovenians that have decided that they are going to fight for freedom. We were lucky enough not to meet with a years-long war as our neighbors Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina did. The war ended on 4th of July 1991. Nevertheless, there were too many people that lost their lives fighting for independent state of Slovenia. <laughs>